I think it would be a mistake if we try to do a story that was very serious. It's a game where you mess around and do crazy stuff. So uh, to match that, you need a crazy story that couldn't, pop, couldn't take itself too seriously because it just wouldn't fit. Some of our critique that uh, we hadn't just got through was about the story itself. And uh, we've been really attentive this time uh, to give a depth to Rico for the player who wanted. Uh, so Rico arrives uh, in Medici, which is the country that he grew up in. It's where he learned to parachute and to base jump and to swim and to do all the things that made him a reckless action hero. One night, a coup happened and Di Ravello took power. On that night, his parents were killed and he had to escape from the island. Uh, in his escape, he met Sheldon and he was kind of recruited into the agency. I think the biggest difference in terms of tone is that you're not working anymore for the agency, right? No, he is now that one-man army, a one-man revolutionary force. He comes back because he gets a letter from his oldest friend saying, hey, Rico, you know, it's been fun, but you know, we kind of lost. And Mario knows what a great action hero Rico is, and suddenly the tides start turning and people start joining the rebellion allowing eventually the exiled leader who was pushed out all those many years ago during the, the coup to come back and start rebuilding a democratic state. Uh, the first main character that you meet is a character named Mario, and he is in some ways a little bit of a comic relief character. Maybe he thinks he's a little bit uh, more important to this rebel uprising than he actually is. We introduced Diorvello as soon as possible, and we're trying to build basically a a rivalry, almost a one-on-one -on -one rivalry with the player and Di Ravello throughout it. The story involves a super element that the evil dictator uses to build these super weapons. But he is still that omniscient, super villain, off in the distance, intent on world power. And of course the ultimate outcome is a confrontation with Di Ravello. The discovery of this Bavarium, which was um, sort of accidentally leaked to him from uh, Dima, Rico's friend, the scientist, caused him to raise his, raise his goals even higher. You know, something that is highly destructive and magnetic. It's just an awesome material. The next level of uranium, if you will. We hope that the characters are enough fun that you don't mind the 30 second cutscene that's introducing what absurd mission you're about to go on. At first we were gonna just do regular motion capture and do our VO in it, but to try to improve the quality a little bit, we ended up using full performance capture. So we capture the facial animation with the actors in full suits, including their voice. What this does is you get a little of the gesticulation that we all do, um, and it ties with how they're emoting within their voice. It's, it's a subtle difference, but I think it improves quality quite a lot. The second piece to it is that we could actually have a cameraman and what's funny, he's not really holding a camera, he's actually holding a little flat screen with dots on it. And when he looks through the flat screen, he sees the game world. So you're actually able to capture the world. This really helped quite a lot in bringing life to our short cinematics. From the beginning, we know that, yeah, this is our mechanics and we prototype them really early. So we kind of know exactly how they're gonna work. So we can kind of be building missions around that. I would say from a gameplay perspective, our missions are excuses to let you try cool things and do cool things. And we've kept there the same philosophy, which is all over the place in the rest of the game, which means leave the player free to experiment and reach his goals the way he prefers. There's between 20 and 30 missions right now, and JC2 I think was like six missions or something, so it's a lot bigger than that. The challenges are um, they can almost be thought of as mini missions, but with the, the big difference being that they're repeatable and they have leaderboards, so they're the kind of things that we encourage players to play again and again and try to get better and better scores in. A lot of times we'll put a challenge start that's right next to where the mission ends. Many of the missions involve rebels involved in combat that Rico is also involved in. Like for example, in, uh, in the civilian settlements that you're liberating, you can, uh, there's police stations in most of the towns. The idea is to cause havoc in the police station by blowing stuff up and wrecking everything. And rebels will start coming in to assist you. And they, they have fully fleshed AI involved in this uh, faction versus faction combat. So you can, to some extent, leave them there and let them continue to take care of the police station while you're going 
to say rip down a statue or do whatever else you want to do in the town. We're trying to build a, such a systemic AI as possible and what I mean by that is that basically they can handle kind of all situations. We create a response so if they hear a gunshot at any point they should kind of react in a systemic way to that. So if they see a military or the military sees them they're gonna start fighting each other and so it's having a balance so that that should happen, but it shouldn't turn into like World War III inside of a town. You know, these people live in this world and they want this revolution to succeed. And it's not just about destroying everything and walking away. Because Rico has an attachment to this world, he wants to go further than just destroying so that he doesn't leave it in just total fire and chaos at the end.